If you haven't heard of Blackview, they basically make cameras for your car, dash cams, reverse cameras. They also make tablets. They actually go a step further and they have a child company subsidiary called Oscol. And today, this is the Oscol Pad 10. It's powered by Android 12, has a 10.1 inch screen, 1200 by 1920 HD, an octa-core processor, a rear 13 megapixel camera, front 8 megapixel, 128 gigs onboard storage, and a 6580 milliamp battery. The box is the exact same box with different art that the black view brings to the table the one we did on our channel earlier it is nice they put a little cardboard inlay but there's no real other foam or anything like that put in there so it's as nice as it needs to be unfortunately they're still going with some plastic on here but they aren't going with plastic on here it's a wax paper that is translucent so that's really cool so this is a screen protector that they put in here i'm guessing this is glass in the box, we have the quick start guide. We have a USB-C cable all wrapped up. We have a pin for the SD card slash SIM card potentially removal tool because it does have 4G. Haven't checked it out yet. And we have a European spec charger. In terms of build quality, it's pretty standard across the board when it comes to Android tablets. Glass screen, aluminum back, a little bit of a camera bump with a SIM card slot as well. The SIM card slot is a hybrid SIM, which means you can have one SD card or two SIM cards, but not all three at the same time. It has a nice 3.5 mil headphone jack tucked away on the top right corner, volume buttons, USB-C and stereo speakers. This is the home screen, and in terms of Android tablets, it's not exactly doing anything brand new. You don't have kind of a Oscal or Blackview news feed on the left, it's just the Google news feed. So unlike something like a Hisense that has its own kind of spin on things with cards and other things that you can kind of pull from domestic services based on the actual brand, Blackview doesn't actually have anything on here right out of the gates, which is a little bit strange because this does have a camera with a camera bump and Blackview makes cameras. It would have been nice to see some sort of proprietary application that kind of had been bundled with this because it would have been cool to see something along the lines of what they make as consumer electronics with the camera, but they just have a normal camera, which we'll show you in a little bit. Yes, this does have Google Play. You can go over here to the Play Store. You can download stuff. You see we're downloading Sketchbook right now. I'm going to show you some note taking utilizing a capacitive pen unfortunately no it doesn't have Wacom so you can't do anything like that if you drop the top down you get all your settings up top all your alerts all your notifications if you go over here you can see it's rather blue you can change that to night light like that make it a little bit easier on your eyes which we are going to do if you move left and right you discover more of your apps if you long press in the middle you can do widgets you can do wallpapers and home settings if you go over to settings you have a ton of stuff the thing about android devices if you're not entirely familiar with them that when it comes to settings, there's too many. We can't look at everything. Unlike an e-ink device where the settings are about four or five things long, there's just too many. There's dark mode, there's eye comfort, there's font sizes. Because this is effectively a supercomputer, which it is. That's what these new phones and tablets and fandangled devices are. They're supercomputers. So there's just too many settings to mention, but basically anything Android post 2020 is going to be able to really do anything attach keyboards attach wireless smartphone peripherals like headphones speakers you have speakers on board as well so you don't need to do any of that but you do have the ability to do bluetooth page turners there's just so much you can do android auto keep this in your car connect it to your pioneer deck inside your honda civic and just get android auto completely initiated like that you have youtube you have wps office you can put gmail this is a blank slate that you effectively make into your own with millions of apps via Google Play. But aside from that, we're going to look at what we specialize in, and that's reading, manga, PDF, etc. So this is the reading experience. This is the Amazon app. You can download Aldeco Moon Plus Reader all day long, but the Amazon app is going to be something that's just very familiar. It's very easy to 
utilized, there's no learning curve, and it has all your stuff in it. If you're anything like us that have been using Amazon services for so long, you just download everything from your library. And anything you don't have, you just go to the store and there's millions of books they have. You can change the font, you can change the font size, you can change the brightness, you can change it to auto. You have themes, you have layout, you have more, and the layout actually has different backgrounds. You can do sage, you can do this kind of pale peach, you can do white, you can change it into dark mode. And because this is a tablet, you get color highlighting, all that fun stuff. Unfortunately, no, even if you make sketches on the scribe using the sticky notes, you can't view them on anything else. That was a question we've been getting a long time. You do have the ability to look at x-ray, you look at flashcards, word runner, popular highlights. There's a bunch of things you can do on Amazon services. No, this is not sponsored by Amazon in any way. It's just a good portal to have everything from manga, graphic novels, audiobooks, and the like. Speaking of audiobooks, if you have a book that has an audiobook attached to it, you can see right here at the bottom it says tap to download. And this will only work on books that have both a regular ebook and an audiobook variant or are a standalone audiobook. Has nothing to do with loving Rachel. I need, I crave the attention, the appreciation. Another advantage you have with LCD LED tablets that have onboard audio is that you don't need to worry about devices like the Amazon Scribe, the Lenovo Yoga Smart Paper with peripherals that you have to connect. For example, if you try to listen to anything on those, they do have audio, but you have to connect things like wireless speakers, wireless headphones. It's just there's something to be said with having stereo speakers on this. And even Kindles back in the day, the Kindle Touch had stereo speakers on them so it would have been just completely easy to just carry that over but sadly most e-readers nowadays just don't have audio in terms of manga amazon is very interesting because in terms of comic books amazon in terms of comic books, Amazon's actually pretty unique in that they have two individual systems that they utilize. If you go to a graphic novel, you'll see that you have panel view. And this is really cool because if you get a portrait based panel like that and you double tap on it, it's going to actually go into that space specific cell and as you swipe along it's gonna go cell by cell and you can see these longer ones that actually can't fit when you turn pages it just goes to the next kind of side which is really interesting you can double tap out and you can still pinch and zoom as the full experience this is really cool and this was actually borrowed from comiXology because they're now the same as Amazon in this day and age whereas manga you don't get that engine, you can't double tap on it, it just zooms in. And if you use manga on ebook readers like the Amazon Kindle Paperwhite, you can actually do the quick page turn system, which you cannot do on here because it doesn't require it because it's an LCD tablet. So that's just different in that regard, but you actually don't get the panel view, which is very interesting. To be honest though, the manga looks absolutely beautiful on basically anything. It's not, I'm not gonna say the Oscar is the way to go just because we're here and we're talking about it. You will get the this almost exact same experience on any capable mainstream tablet nowadays it really is no issue whatsoever you can pinch and zoom although you don't really need to because the screen real estate is over 10 inches and actually when you do pinch and zoom it processes a little bit it's that magical kind of process button you see in the movies and it just makes everything smoothed over and look great out of the box, you get WPS Office for PDFs. You can download anything. You can download Adobe. You can download basically any PDF reader you wish. Again, LCD tablet, LED tablets, you're not going to encounter the same kind of errors and ghosting and just lack of usability you get on ebook readers. Yes, you can do pinch and zoom. You can't do long press on everything. Some devices will be able to isolate text elements. On this one, it seems that you can, but some will not. And it's going to depend on the application. For example, this one actually does scrolling. It doesn't do page by page, but certain ones will have settings for that. Certain ones will have page turn settings that you'll have automatic page turns, page turn animations. Again, it's a blank slate experience when it comes to Android tablets nowadays used to get locked into things with the Nook Color and the Nook Tablet back in the day where it's very kind of prioritized to the Barnes & Noble brand. Now it's just, you get this, it's Android 12, you just open it up and you just start using it the way you want. You go through Google Play and you say, these are all the things that I need to download and then you just put them on your unit. Well, we intend to find out, starting with the stylus. So really with LCD LED tablets, you're not gonna run into any 
problems with video playback. Back in the day, you know, there's going to be formatting errors and everything like that. Now, YouTube just comes bundled with these devices. You go to YouTube, you start watching videos, you get stereo speakers, you can do full screen mode, you can change the lighting, you can change the brightness. There's absolutely just zero gripes about the multimedia playback on this unit. If you want to browse your file explorer and just sideload in movies, you can do that too. As we said, no Wacom, no pen support. You can't use the Surface Pen or the Kobo Rakuten Pen, so that's a little bit out. You can use your fingertip, or you can use a pen like this. You know, they have made some serious strides in capacitive pens. They have these kind of wire, super fine thread wire mesh tips now that have a decent amount of flexibility that very much simulate as good as possible your fingertips so that it works but still gives you a pen like feel. It's just never going to be the same because you can't really lean your hand on it because basically now I'm touching it with the capacitive part of the meat of my hand as I'm trying to touch it with the capacitive part of this. So it's just going to be this very hovery kind of feel. So needless to say, note taking, although Google Play has great note taking applications, it's just completely unrealistic on a device like this. Although the camera on the back has a camera bump that looks like it has two lenses, one of them is a flash package. So unfortunately, even if you do something like this and press the button to go into quote unquote a different zoom range, you're just doing a digital zoom. It's not actually an optical zoom. You're not switching cameras either. You don't have any Carl Zeiss lenses or Fujifilm lenses. It's just there. I feel like the camera is just there as a pleasantry if you needed to satisfy a stipulation for Google Play that says you must have a camera on board because pretty much it's an unimpressive camera. It is decent. It doesn't look terrible in any degree. It's overall solid. It works perfectly fine. I mean, there's not really any gripes there. You can change the aspect ratio. You can do 1080p recording. However, again, it just doesn't have that. It just lacks the camera depth and everything just looks a little bit flat, but it's nice to have and the quality is adequate. When it comes to devices like these, a lot of the time they can just get lost in the shuffle. But Blackview is a legitimate player in the world of consumer electronics. They make a ton of tablets in all screen sizes, they make rugged phones, earbuds, smartwatches, everything under the sun, and it's priced typically lower than other manufacturers. To get the amount of specs out of this thing that you do for only $130 is nothing short of a miracle. And it's by a reputable brand and manufacturer for over a decade. Details down below if you want to know more, and stay tuned for more videos coming from goodereader.com.